Hey guys, it's Shalyn. Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to discuss with you horse training equipment must-haves. So, basically what I did to decide what I'm going to do for this video was I thought of five different pieces of equipment that I felt like you needed to start a horse. So, so I basically just went back to the very first time I started a horse and what equipment did my, my brother basically help me start my first horse, but what equipment did he give me and what equipment did I feel like you couldn't live without if you were starting your horse or training a horse or restarting a horse or just stuff I feel like you need. Before we get started, if you guys have any questions pertaining to this, right there. And in the link in the description will bring you a video to all information pertaining to that. The very first thing that I feel like is extremely important is probably a halter. Now, any halter will do, but I prefer rope halters. Um, nylon halters, horses, especially green horses, have a tendency to fight you a lot. And they can pull against you. It's easier for them to just drag you around the whole arena or pasture or pen or wherever you're working them where a rope halter is a bit more uncomfortable for them to do that. I prefer rope halters that are kind of the thinner rope and stiff. So this one's a lot stiffer. And this is also like a $30 rope halter. You don't have to go that expensive. I had just a simple halter when I first started my horse. And yes, I feel like the stiffer and better quality halters actually do make a difference. Oh, also the four knots make a difference on the nose. You can still get it done with any other halter. I personally would say rope halters though. So you need a halter, okay? The second item is a lead rope. Lead ropes as well. I use just a standard regular lead rope. I can't tell you how long it was when I first started my first horse and it was doable. But also the first horse I started, she was super chill. So she honestly never gave me problems. And nine times out of 10, or even more than that, that's not gonna be the case. I like, a lead rope that is 14 feet long. And the reason for this is if there's ever a time that you need to work your horse or your horse is kind of just being an idiot, you have a lot more line to lunge them on a 14 foot lead rope a lot better than like a seven foot lead rope or 10 foot or however long. If you need your horse out of your space, then you can let him out a lot longer. I The certain lead ropes I get, you can find like clinician lead ropes, 14 feet made out of yacht rope, yacht rope. Spelling over here somewhere. I never know how to say it. What's nice about that rope is it's super flimsy and so it just gives a lot more clear cues because um, they have more movement but if anything I really do like the 14 foot lead ropes. If you can do 10 you know it is doable but these do make life a bit easier. Your horse is able to move out more, get moving more and there's not so long that you get tangled up in them like a lunge line and they're not so short that you can't really control your horse or when you're doing an exercise. So they're kind of just that perfect medium length. The training stick. So this is this training stick that I, I have like four of these, but this is kind of the same idea. It's about four feet and the string is, it's the same rope, the yak rope, and it's a few feet longer than the stick. The reason these are better than dressage whips is because they are solid and so they give really, they're a lot easier to work with. They give better cues. I'd honestly say use a training stick rather than a dressage whip if you're going to be training a horse. That's my personal preference. I think they are a lot more beneficial. This one is like 50 or 60 bucks. Do you have to spend that much on one? No, you can find one for like 10 bucks. They might not last as long, but they work just as well. My very first one I made, so I just got this fiberglass post that you use for those like easy electric fences. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I just got one of those and I, I wrapped it in duct tape, so I wanna get fiberglass stuck in my hands when I'm working with it. And then I got rope that is about this thick and I wrapped it around the end super close together and then taped that so it made a handle. You get what I'm saying? So. I like spiraled it so it was close together so it made a handle. Um, you don't have to have a handle but your hand can kind of crap up if you don't. And then I got rope that was about this same thickness and length and I taped it to the top with like electrical tape or duct tape. So you can make them 
so you don't have to go spend 60 bucks on a stick. The next thing is a smooth snaffle bit. If you're training, restarting, whatever a horse, you do not want to use a shank bit, okay? The horse, with a shank bit, a horse cannot move laterally as easily, and they cannot, do not know how much pressure you're putting on the horse's mouth. They're not nearly as forgiving as a normal snaffle. A shank, I'm just gonna say this really quick, I have a different video talking about bits, but I'm just gonna go through this super quick, it's not gonna be as de in depth, but a shank, when you have a shank, it ha adds leverage. So if you're pulling with one pound of pressure, the horse is actually feeling like five, or you know, depending the length of the shank, it could be like 10 or however pounds of pressure on their mouth. Where a snaffle, if you just pull with one pound of pressure, the horse can get one pound of pressure. A snaffle is the best way to go. I'm just gonna pause here at this lovely spot and I just want to add that I will not ride my horse in a snaffle until about the 10th ride. I'll ride him just in a halter or um, a bosal hackamore for the first 10 rides because they are a lot more forgiving than a snaffle. So I just want to point that out really quick. We will continue on with the video. When I say smooth snaffle, I'll show you a few examples. So you can use one with a French link dog bone. This isn't a snaffle bit, but I'll show you anyway. It's got the, it breaks in the center. It's like the dog bone. Or just has the single break. These are the ones that I use, the single break. This is the bit that I used to train my very first horse. I haven't really used it since, but just a smooth snaffle. This is the next one I started using is the egg butt snaffle. This is the egg butt. And this would probably be my next one that I would use if it came down to it. But this is the one that I always use, just a D-ring smooth snaffle. I use it on all of my horses. No matter the horse, they all get trained in this. But like I said, like any smooth snaffle is your best bet. The very last thing is what I think is very important. Important, important are things to desensitize your horse to. So horses are scared of basically anything that moves and make a noise. And the more you expose your horse to s stuff, the calmer your horse is going to get, the better minded they're going to be. Um, so you just want to expose your horse to a ton of stuff. So, my main thing is plastic bags. These are kind of rough because I've been using them a lot. I just put them on the end of my training stick. So plastic bags, you can use feed bags to flap around the horse. You can use tarps. Um, that's when dressage whips are awesome because when you swing them, they kind of make a scarier different noise. Um, get them used to you swinging, swinging the dressage whip. Um, swinging ropes around them, anything that you can desensitize them to, anything you can expose them to, anything you can get them used to is going to calm their mind down a lot, it's going to get them thinking more, it's just not going to make your horse so reactive. Things to desensitize your horse to, anything, and it can just be at home stuff, just get creative and expose your horse to everything. Anyway, that is everything for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Feel free to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, if it was helpful. If you have any comments, video ideas, questions, post them down in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you would like to do that as well. Thank you again. I love you all, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.